I tell you what, I know I could do stand up comedy in my own mind anyway. So uh, good to see everybody. I hope you're having a great Monday. Big waves to you. Good to see you. It's going to be a good week because we're on the word. We're, we're on the letter E this week. E. Okay. So we kicked off this Monday with a word. I never said that I was the smartest human in the world. So when I see things like this, I'm like, man, I should have paid attention better in English class. Uh, so, but I didn't. And I pay for it at 47 years old. So the word for today on this Monday to kick off the ease for the week is equanimity. Arlene, don't pay attention too much this morning to the words and the pronunciations of the word, okay? Equanimity is how I'm going to pronounce it this morning. So it's mental calmness, composure, and evenness of temper, especially in a difficult situation. How many of you feel like that you exemplify equanimity? Okay. Um, I think I do. No, kidding. Um, I want to. I, I want to be the person that has mental calmness, composure, even temper, especially in a difficult situation. Um, but I want to point out a few people. So I'll tell you some people on the coach's corner that I have been around for over a decade that I would say I would give a shout out to for this demeanor. Alan White. Alan White is somebody that I go, you know what? Mental calmness, composure, evenness of temper. Even when things I've watched things not go his way, and you know he's probably not real happy, it, it's 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 a difference in the way he pervades it than how I pervade it when I'm not happy. And I go, man, I need to be more like Alan. So big shout out to you, Alan. Uh, I really mean that. I've watched him for over a decade. With equanimity. You can deal with situations with calm and a reason while keeping your inner happiness. And where I really went this morning was reason. Reason. So many times I don't look to reason through situations. Can you relate to that? Um, and, and, and what I pulled was if you want to succeed in life, no matter what age, Equanimity is going to take you a lot further than hostility. And I thought about that. And I thought, man, reason, reason, reason. And then I went to a lesson I learned recently. And so I want to tell you, I've got a really good friend, really good friend. He's become a brother to me. I don't, I don't have to say a name, but he knows who he is and he's on the coach's corner most mornings. But the other day I was having a situation in my life where how many of you can, I'm, I'm going to try to say this real quick, Andrea, how many of you like have a different viewpoint than someone else? Okay. And because there's different views, you might start to create a villain in them. Does that make sense? Like they start to get on your nerves. Like you used to spend time with them and now their eating is getting on your nerves and their walking is getting on your nerves and the way they talk is getting on your nerves. And all of this, because do you, feel, do you understand what I'm saying? Like they can't do nothing right in your mind because they, you, you are villainizing them, if that's a word. You're vil villainizing them because really in reality, it's because you just got a different viewpoint. Their view is a little different from yours. And let me tell you what happened to me the other day. So this was going on in my life. And I was ready to stick this human down and have a conversation with them. I'm like, it's time for me to sit down and have a come to Jesus meeting with this person. And I said, before I do, I'm going to give my good buddy a call. So I gave him a call. And I said, I want to get your view on this. 
And he said, and gave me so much, he said, be careful not to try to villainize him because y'all's views are different or because you're kind of at a different place right now. And he talked to me. And after about, I mean, probably was three minutes. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so right. You're so right. It changed my whole perspective. And over the last several days, I've had communications with this person I was having these issues with in my mind. And the communication level has been better and better and better. And what it really taught me is reason. Reason. If I just put myself in a box with the person I'm having conflict with, then I'm probably not going to find reason. But what if I put myself in a box with not only the person I'm having conflict with, but a reasonable voice that could start to help me reason with the situation, the outcome could be so much better. Now, this might be very complicated with equanimity this morning, but when you look at the word equanimity, it talks about reason. And I think it's very important for all of us to have someone that when we're going through that issue, just like I experienced last week, you could throw a person into that box with you that you could bounce some ideas off of and they could give you a different perspective. They could give you possibly a sense of reason that could change the entire outcome. So to my buddy, thank you. Thank you. You taught me a great lesson. Andrew, I'll turn it to you. Well, Sorry. Coach, I got to say, when you were talking about this person that you knew over 10 years, over a decade, and they're always so calm, I was so confident that you were not talking about me. So, but for a second there, I went, what? And then I realized, okay, he's got to know some other people for over a decade, because when I was reading through this word, and I did have to listen multiple times to like the internet pronounce it for me. But when I was reading, I thought, oh my goodness, this is what I strive for. This is what I want, but it can be a little difficult to get. So equanimity, and I'm going to have to say it slow. So hopefully I'm saying it right. But every moment of equanimity is a moment of waking up from the delusion that things should be as we want them to be. And that's from the book on how to wake up. And I thought, oh my gosh, isn't that true? Like every time I get riled up, every time I get my feelings hurt, every time I get triggered, it seems to come from an expectation inside me, not reality. So if I could just kind of get over my own expectations, maybe I wouldn't have such a problem, but um, that doesn't always happen. So when I hear this word, I think about like calm when you're under fire, you know, those people that they're just even killed. I need to spend a little bit more time with Alan so I can see more of that. But I, I love that because I can't really think of a whole lot of people in my life that are like that in those moments of stress. And, you know, when we think about it, like when we're logical and we're sitting back here and we're not in conflict we realize that equanimity is always going to be the best solution for a conflict. As Martin Luther King Jr. said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. And hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And that really is equanimity. But man, isn't it hard to get there, especially in those moments when we're just up here, like we want to be calm but we're up here. So I looked up how we can get it. Like, how can we feel this? How can we behave in this way in those rough moments? So the first thing is just to remind ourselves. So the first trick to achieving it is keeping that word, that thought that I hate having to keep saying, equanimity in the front of your mind, especially when somebody pushes your buttons and you feel that rage response kicking in. And we all know the signs when we are triggered, right? Our breathing becomes more shallow. Our heart starts racing. You know, our for me, like my shoulders, like slowly or quickly start touching my earlobes. You get warm. Oh my gosh. And I have no poker face. So you guys have seen it. Like my face turns all red. My, you know, like I can feel it in every inch of my body. And when we start to feel that, take a moment to remind yourself, 
I think that I'm having a moment. I think I'm getting out of this zone. Let me get back in it. Number two is to breathe. Just take a breath. I saw a, a reel the other day that it was talking about when they, like before they say anything to, to another person, they take a deep breath to calm themselves, regardless of if it's a positive conversation or a negative one, and to remind themselves to be present. So if we just take that moment just to take a deep breath, maybe say something nicely, nice to yourself um, and walk away. So if you focus on your breathing and maybe some neutral things happening around you, and then just say something calmly to yourself, like, I'm okay. Now this will work out. This person is good hearted. They're not attacking me. Everything's going to be okay. I have a hundred percent track record of surviving moments just like this. We're going to be okay. And just speak nicely to yourself in some calming breaths to pull yourself back to that place of equanimity. Number three is practice empathy, just like coach talked about. You know, we have no idea. You, know, you call me and you maybe throw some energy at me and I'm like, oh, they're coming at me. But I have no idea that that energy you just got thrown at you or your dog's sick or whatever it may be. Like we have no idea what's really going on behind closed doors or as coach says, once the garage door comes down, we have no idea. So if you feel something from somebody else, try to feel it with them and realize that this probably is about them and they're going through something. And if we can share some love with them, help them feel a little bit better, we're going to feel better in the process as well. Number four is to shake it off. And I picture, I, I just had this visual in front of me, but I picture a deer, like let's pretend that we're all deer and we are getting chased by whatever eat deer. Well, we're going to say a lion. I don't know if it's lion. We're a cougar. I don't know. Somebody is chasing us. So there's this moment we're running, we're running, we're running and we get away. And what do they do? They shake it off. They like literally like, is that Taylor Swift? They just shake it off and they get it out of their body and they go back to what they're doing. So we have to take a little cue from that deer to when, when we're in those moments, shake it off, just work through it, shake it off, and then move yourself on through some kind of movement. So maybe you go for a run, maybe you jump on that treadmill or you do a little bit of yoga or do as coach would do like a thousand burpees or me like three jumping jacks, um, but do something to move your body to get rid of that energy. And then lastly, I'll say meditate and talk to Jesus. So when we have those moments, when we are triggered, take that moment, you know, dear Lord, thank you for this day, right? Take it just a couple minutes to, to pray and work through it and ask for maybe a little bit of help or take a couple minutes or, and take a couple minutes to focus yourself inside your body, meditate for, you know, 60 seconds to however long you may need just to move past whatever energy is flowing through you. That's not, well, I was going to try to put an O-U-S on the end of that word and I can't. So that's not having you be in a place of equanimity. <laughs> Thank you for this one, coach. And was, was Colleen Sanders on this morning? We got to give her a big shout out. She'll be listening to the recording if she's not. But okay. Colleen, we know it was your birthday this weekend. Happy belated birthday. We hope you have an amazing weekend. Um, you're a special human in our eyes. So, uh, but guys, have a great Monday. For all that will be traveling this week, we pray over you and uh, safe travels down yes, to Destin. Yes. We love you guys. Have a great day. Love you. Have a beautiful day. Have a great day. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.